Welcome back to another Random Bits. Uh, in this one, we're going to add uh, some animations to our bunny. Uh, we're going to give him a uh, running animation for as he's running and a jumping animation uh, for when he's jumping. Uh, to do that, we're first going to uh, drag in um, a couple of new sprites. So we're going to grab the um, second walking animation and the bunny jumping animation sprites uh, so we've got his current legs apart now we're going to have the legs together that's for his walking animation and then for his uh, jump animation he'll be that one over there on the side um, so now we ne need to actually uh, create uh, our animations so what we're going to do is we're going to open up the animation window so from the window menu we're going to find the animation window and we're going to take that and dock it down at the bottom here um, and then we're going to select the bunny and we'll get uh, this prompt over here that says to begin an animation we need to create an animator and an animation clip and click this button there so we're going to click that create button and it's going to open up uh, a file dialog and the first animation we're going to create is the bunny running animation all right so now that the bunny, bunny running animation is open, we kind of have this timeline based thing here uh, onto which we can drag various sprites. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag the bunny walk sprite into this location. And then we're going to grab uh, the bunny walk two sprite and drop it over here somewhere. All right. And if we press play now, uh, we can see our bunny frantically uh, running. And the reason it's uh, playing back so fast is that our uh, animation is set to play at 60 frames per second. So what we're going to do is we're going to slow that down to 15 frames per second. Um, and then we're going to double check on frame zero that we have the first bunny. And we're just going to put the second clip on uh, frame one. So if we run that now, we can see that our bunny runs at a much more uh, sedate pace okay um, so that's our first animation clip and now we're going to whilst we're here we're going to create another animation clip for the bunny jumping um, and uh, this is pretty straightforward because there's only going to be one frame so what we can do is from this little drop down over here we can choose create new clip and we're going to call this one um, bunny jumping and save that and into this clip, once again, we're going to make it a 15 frames per second clip. And we're just going to drag our bunny into there. Um, and so if we run that now, we can see there's our animation with his, the bunny in jumping mode. Uh, and we can go back to our running one and watch our little bunny running. Excellent. So now that we um, have those uh, two clips what we need to do is have a look at the actual animator uh, that uh, is on the bunny and you'll have seen that when we created that first animation clip it created a bunny animator and on the bunny now we have an animator component um, and so what we can do is we can go to the window and we can go to the animator window and we're going to dock that once again down at the bottom here and we'll see this interesting diagram here. So the animation system in, um, in Unity is based on a state machine. Um, and what we can see here is if we press play, that we're just having the bunny running animation, just looping over and over again. And there's our bunny running. And the reason that is, is because this node here is the entry node into our system, we basically says when the animation starts, the first thing you do is to go from the entry node and follow this transition line to the bunny running. And so that basically sets up the default animation for the for the bunny. All right. Uh, but we want to do um, shifting between running and jumping as, as the game progresses. So what we can do is we can add our own um, transitions. So what we can do is we cl right click on this guy, go make transition we'll drag it along to uh, bunny jumping. And then from bunny jumping, we'll right click and say make transition back to bunny running. 
Excellent. So now if we run this, what we will see uh, is that from entry, it's gone to the bunny running state, plays the bunny running animation, follows the transition down to bunny jumping, and then follows the transition back to a bunny running. And that's why he runs for 15 frames per second and then switches to falling for 15 frames per second and then switches back again. Now, um, clearly this is not quite what we want because we want the bunny to either be running or jumping, not just flipping back and forth between them. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to put some control about when or some conditions around when this uh, transition happens. Uh, and the way to do that is with a parameter. So what we're going to do is in the parameters window here, uh, we can go and add a new parameter and we're going to make this a floating uh, value, a floating number, a floating point number, and we're going to call this new floating point um, parameter, we're going to call it V velocity. Um, next up, we can click on this particular transition over here. And in the inspector, we see a bunch of information uh, for uh, the transition. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new condition about when this transition is allowed to um, activate. So if we click on the plus here, we can select our parameters. So we can say when V velocity is, um, is greater than zero, um, we're going to make it 0 0.01. So as soon as he has a little bit of velocity, and V velocity in this case here is actually going to be, we're going to tie this a little later to our vertical velocity. So the speed at which, um, the velocity at which the bunny is moving up or down. So we're going to say if, if the bunny's up or down velocity is greater than 0 0.01, then we want to transition through to the bunny jumping animation. And in a similar line, what we're going to do is on this guy over here, on the transition coming back from jumping to running, we're going to add a condition and we're going to say if the vertical velocity is less than 0 0.01, uh, then we're going to transition back. So if we uh, press play now, we can see our little animation there. And because we're not hitting the condition, the velocity is set to 0 0.01, all it's doing is just playing the bunny animation. However, if I was to change this value um, whilst it's running to one, we can see we've now switched to the jump animation and we have the jump animation playing over and over again. And if I set that back to uh, 0 0.01, then it's back to the running animation again. Excellent. So of course now we need to actually control that or do that with um, our code or actually as the player jumps, because at the moment if we run this, if he's jumping, he's just going to be running whilst jumping and we actually want the jump animation to play. Um, so what we're going to do here is if we open up um, our scripts and we go to our bunny controller script, um, which is uh, the thing currently controlling our jumping. So when we press the jump key, we add in a bit of uh, that vertical force. And in here, what we really want to do is till the um, animation the animator or the state machine for the bunny animations to um, switch states by set changing that condition. Uh, so the first thing we can do is all we need to do is we can go private animator um, my anim for animation. So we're going to store a reference to the animation or the animator. And then in our start uh, method for our script, we're going to do um, there, and we are going to retrieve the animator component that is attached to our game object. Okay. And uh, now that we have this object, we can uh, make it respond or, or, or within our update method, uh, set some values to it. Um, so what we're going to do is within um, the update method, we are going to say on the animation, we're going to call the set float method, which lets us set any float parameters that we've set up on that animator. And we're going to call our parameter and we're going to get the um, case matching 
velocity loss we're going to spell velocity and what we're going to tie it to is the uh, rigid body that we have which is basically the controlling the physics and we're going to pick out the rigid body its velocity but in the y direction we can save that up so pretty much in every uh, frame update, we're going to, on the animator, uh, set its V velocity par parameter to the current velocity of um, the bunny as he's either falling down or jumping up. All right, so if we switch back to Unity now and uh, we run this, uh, we can see our little bunny running. And if we press the spacebar, we can see, firstly, if you notice the animation, uh, the V velocity parameter here, when we press space, changes, and our bunny animates. All right. And off he goes. And there's our animation. Um, so one thing to notice is if he's, uh, we, we, our condition was if V velocity was greater than 0 0.1. So if you notice the bunny, when we press the space bar, he, does the jumping animation when he's shooting up because he's, the velocity is positive. But as soon as he starts falling, the velocity goes negative because we're now heading in the uh, negative um, uh, vertical direction. And um, But that means he's as he's falling, the animation changes to the running animation as he falls. Now, I actually like that, so I'm gonna leave it like that. However, if you didn't want that to happen, uh, what you could do is you could tweak the script so that rather than just passing the uh, velocity, you could do a um, maths if dot uh, maths maths dot if oh I'll have to look that up for you. But basically, uh, you could do the absolute value of of that um, value. So effectively getting rid of the uh, negative sign. Um, and that would then make your bunny animate if he is, uh, regardless of whether he's falling or going up. But in my case, I kind of want him to look a bit frantic. So I, I'm going to have him do the jump animation as he's going up and the running animation as he is falling down. Um, that's pretty much it for animation. So I, uh, in our next uh, video, we are going to add in um, all our grass and our cacti obstacles for our bunny to jump over and basically add the meat of the game and do collision detections and, and get our um, the, the, the rough skeleton of our game complete. Hopefully this uh, video has uh, been um, informative. Uh, please like it if you like it. Um, make sure to share it with others if you think they can find it, will find it useful. And of course, remember to subscribe uh, so that you can get updates uh, when I release my next video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Until next time. Cheers. All right. So just for those of you who are interested, it is indeed the mathf.abs function that we need. So by putting in there, that will take the absolute value, um, forcing this thing to always be uh, a positive value. And so if we switch back to our animation and uh, play, we will now see when we jump, we animate up and down as we go. Um, but I don't really like that effect because there's kind of that bit of lag as he bounces before he uh, starts running again. Um, so uh, in my case, I will just leave that as the raw velocity and uh, when we run it again we now get this kind of jump and fall in animation excellent um, the other thing uh, that I forgot to mention is that now we've made our code changes uh, we can open up our, our github uh, desktop tool and we'll see a list of all the uh, files that have uh, changed and what we're going to do is we're going to add a comment commit that to our local um, repo and then synchronize that with GitHub um, so that 
the, those files are now up in the public repository. Once again, thank you for watching and until next time, cheers.